Many people think of O'Keeffe as the undulating landscapes or the you know, hundred flowers, and they real, fail to realize the full capacity and scope of what she did. And again, there are many parallels even just between the sort of general backgrounds of the two figures in terms of both being transplants to New York City, both being very much part of the urban sensibility, and yet always feeling a calling outside of it. For as long as they lived in New York, O'Keeffe always had to go outside to Lake George and then on her own, of course, to New Mexico. And Emilio, of course, had to seek out the, the light and the colors and the sunshine going to the Caribbean, going um, uh, to the islands, you know, and always, you know, touching base again with the pace and the life of uh, the modern tempo of the city as well. Also, even though both were very privileged in positions of being in New York City, being in the modernist milieu, they did retain a sense of the outsider. They weren't quite in the center. Uh, O'Keeffe, of course, by being a female and, you know, struggling in what was essentially a man's world. Emilio, by being Latino and also by being gay. And so there's this situation where, despite everything, there is a sense of marginalization and approaching things from that direction. And we look here at these two paintings, and I think it's a marvelous set of uh, comparative situations, the way the architecture of New York has been formalized rendered into these geometric abstractions where the lights and the windows of the buildings become almost cutaways from the abstract black masses of the buildings themselves. And then you have that evocative uh, late sunset lighting, you know, uh, marked by clouds in the background that sort of uh, creates a sort of romanticized mood that plays off in an intriguing way against the hard geometries and abstractions that, uh, you know, make the buildings. And on the left is um, O'Keeffe's uh, radiator building, on the right is uh, a composition by uh, Sanchez. So one can see, again, this sort of sensibility and affinity. But it doesn't <coughs> end there. Uh, you know, there are later, again, connections. And we see O'Keeffe continue to move and develop. And even when she is in uh, New Mexico, as we get into the 60s, she is not um, blind to the developments of the art world, the move to getting much larger in scale, the move towards abstraction in a more minimal and simplified manner, and large swaths of color fields. And we can see her responding to the <coughs> series like uh, the um, patio series that we see on the left is one of the uh, works from that series. And of course, I'm pairing it with one of um, Emilio's works. Uh, he did this in his Morocco series. He did this with some of his New York skyscrapers. Again, we have some wonderful uh, examples um, uh, in, the, in the gallery as well, where there is a treatment of the um, landscape or the cityscape as just a play of pure abstract forms. And there's a radical reduction in the amount of information of visual detail that goes in. I've sitting, been sitting next to this and I think it's a lot of fun because just the way the apertures of the doors, I'm seeing the relationship you know, with the black, uh, you know, the black patio and some of these other sort of structures and strategies. So while they retain, again, a voice that's very independent, they're aware of the trends that are emerging around them and this constant tension between the abstract and the representational this dialogue that they affect is, is a very um, you know, intriguing and informative one. And then we also see the nature works. You know, Emilio isn't just painting houses. He is interested in the landscape. He is interested in nature. And we see these lovely pairings. On the top is a Hudson River uh, painting by Emilio. On the bottom, from the Red Hills by uh, O'Keeffe. And again, this idea of just using any template and working in a personal idiom, in a personal sense, where the representation is there, but the abstracting is certainly uh, apparent and available. And then, you know, we do have flowers. <laughs> you know, I mean, one can't avoid that. Emilio painted many flower studies and did many works. And these flower studies of his sometimes are dismissed because they are often graphic works or because they are floral. Many times he did flowers as his daily exercise as an artist. He would wake up and set aside an amount of time to just do 
sketches of the flowers, and one has to distinguish between what were the um, exercise works and what are meant as a more formal composition. Clearly, his plant on the right is a more formalized study meant to be seen as a finished and refined work in its own, and I pair it with O'Keeffe's Black Iris, which is a very uh, well-known work of hers, uh, owned by the Metropolitan. And it's more than just the desire to paint flowers, which is something that we don't think of very often, but it is something that many modernists did, you know, including many American modernists, sometimes just as bread and butter work, sometimes just because it was something that they were also drawn to. And it's intriguing how many um, uh, advanced avant-garde American modernists also had this whole body of floral work uh, as well. And when we look at this, we can see other shared affinities that I think are very important, such as the idea of cropping and magnification and the recontextualization of the flower by the cropping and the magnification. We have a whole new orientation in viewing it. Flowers are smaller than us. We often see them in multiple bunches. We usually see them at some sort of a distance. Here, they're right up in our face. They're large. They're isolated and individual, and it changes our whole way of looking at them and our whole physical and formal relationship to them. We also see that through this act of radical cropping, where the entire plant doesn't even fill the screen, we see also a sense of a kind of emphasis on a central type focus and a little less so as we get around the perimeter, especially with the O'Keeffe which you know, almost blurs as one gets to the parameters of the painting, and is painted in a gray scale. And that's very interesting, not just as formal choices in and of themselves, but when we add these together, magnification, cropping, isolation, focus and blurring, depth, which you know, implies depth of field. In no Keith's case, the idea of the gray scale, these are all the language of photography. And these are all the appropriation of photographic strategies and photographic looking that have been now applied to painted works.